What's up, good people? Rodasi here. I um, have been challenged to start blogging and vlogging more regularly, so this video is in um, an answer to that call as well as some questions that I've had recently about meditation. So if you follow me at all, you know that I have been practicing meditation since 1999, pretty regularly. I've gone through some research periods where I wasn't doing it as much and found uh, good stuff came from that research, which is that life is way better on meditation. So one of the things that comes up um, over over these years and after my two meditation teacher trainings and teaching hundreds of people all over the world, mostly in Michigan um, and across the U.S., but definitely in some other countries as well, is that misconception that the movement of the mind has anything to do with how well someone is practicing meditation. So the purpose that I've found of meditation is, yes, to help us establish life in the present moment. And when we're lucky, we get to have the experience of this still mind. But what many people don't understand is that the movement of the mind is something that is just what happens as a human being and that it doesn't have anything to do with you succeeding or failing at practicing so if, if you need an expert in this field to share with you that just because you're having thoughts, uh, that, that, that this is no excuse for you, that this is not, it doesn't mean anything other than you're human and you're alive and what a blessing that is, right? So it has nothing to do with uh, you being, if having an effective meditation practice. Now thoughts and thinking are two different things. Thoughts arise because there's just a flow of life force energy in the universe. And when the nervous system perceives anything, whether it's stress dissolving in the nervous system or just some dynamic flow through the particular place in the universe you are existing in that your receptive nervous system is perceiving and therefore creates a thought. Another way to say that is, I have senses as a human being, and as they perceive the environment and the world unfurling before me, as well as perceiving anything that may be taking place within the nervous system, uh, the mind responds to that because the mind and body work together, and that's a really cool thing. So we just change our relationship to that movement, though. You know, thoughts come and go. But what we've been habituated to do unconsciously, we've been conditioned to just stay in the mind, bouncing around to this illusory past and future all day long with our thoughts. And so when you use an effective meditation tool to take your awareness within and de-stress the nervous system and shift the neurological conditioning and to also help you to become aware of how the content of your mind is taking you out of the present moment because you, you're you the only one who can see all of that and you have to be the one to see all of that. So folks like me who've been down the road can help guide you but you have to be the one to put the time in and to develop a self-mastery over changing your relationship to movement of the mind which is the perception of the universe which is the perception of life's unfolding and which is also the perception of stress healing in the nervous system or the nervous system perceiving through the senses the world no big deal it's all pretty scientific really so thoughts are no deal is my point so uh, the other thing is is that well, you begin to recognize that you can shift your relationship to th thinking. You recognize that thinking, and you already know this, thinking is the problem. Obsessive thinking. Thinking too much about any particular subject matter, trying to figure it out and control and manage the universe. 
when I have asked hundreds of people what they want more than anything in the world, it's, it typically winds up being something like peace of mind. So they can feel safe and therefore relax and experience peace of mind. So that they can feel, you know, a sense of security in their relationships with money, with their health. And why? So that they can experience a sense of relaxed state of alertness and feel at peace and ease so they can enjoy life. And then what I've discovered through my own teacher, through, through my own mentors and my own practice, my own research, uh, is that you always have the opportunity to notice the peaceful quality of right now, the aliveness of right now. And the circumstances of your life, the way the body's perceiving the universe and healing stress, whatever is wanting to go on gets to just go on. And you don't have to talk yourself into that being non-personal. You get to show up in this state of kind of like quiet, wow, wow, I get to, I have the privilege of being alive. So that's what the point of meditation is, is to help you discover the ways in which you are habituated, just just naturally habituated to pay attention to the thoughts and go on this journey throughout the whole day of bouncing around, which is very stressful to the nervous system, uh, uh, on these thought streams of past and future and what ifs and et cetera. And if you'd be willing to implement some close-eyed time, like twice a day, 20 minutes a day, or 10 minutes once a day, whatever you can get yourself to do. And then begin to stay attentive with your eyes open. Stay attentive to just being super present. There are some awesome techniques. I'm going to be sharing more and more each day with, with folks um, to, to come to the present moment, right? And I'm going to tell you that that is difficult only because of our conditioning and the weight of our habituated state of being addicted to thinking. And we're terrified to let that go until we begin to discover that life still holds us, things still get done, everything can still be um, like the universe manages it. We can let go, we can experience greater deg degrees of peace and ease and passionate aliveness all at the same time. I want that for everybody as I continue to each and every day discover that from moment to moment for myself. But man, I got to tell you, you have to have a rock solid tool in order to be um, making any headway with that because of the weight, you know, the gravity, the inertia we're working against with this addictive habit of, of being in our head. And so you totally can. You totally can shift your relationship to thinking. You can change your relationship to thought. And you know what? Maybe even more beautifully, you can change your relationship to peace, to harmony, to the aliveness, to the joy and wonder of existence, of life. And so if you're interested in any of that, you know, um, if, if anything in this video gave you anything to uh, kind of grab onto, to to bring you more fully in the present moment, to give you hope, to get you excited, to inspire you, please hit the like button, hit subscribe. I'm going to be f shuffling out all kinds of good stuff soon. I have said yes to this call of the wild heart, looking for more ways to live life in the present moment and to establish a really effective meditation practice. Um, yeah, just, just uh, share the love, spread the love, and um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to leave a comment below and, and I'll get back at you. Until we meet again, enjoy this moment. Peace.